We all love a good scare, but these sequels, they didn't just miss the mark. They bulldozed right through it. So prepare to cringe, maybe facepalm, and even throw some popcorn at the screen as we dive into the top 10 worst horror sequels that should have never been made on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. There are so many amazing horror movies out there, but if we're really looking at the entire catalog for every good movie, there are probably at least three bad ones. Today, I want to focus on sequels, though, from the stupid to the boring to the downright unnecessary. These movies have very few, if any, redeeming qualities. And I also tried to pick a few that you might not necessarily think of right off the bat. But without further ado, grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring and get this rumble started. Starting us off at number 10 is Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This movie is a disappointing entry in the franchise due to its numerous flaws and deviations from the established formula. After the shocking ending of Halloween 4, where Jamie Lloyd seemingly follows in her uncle's murderous footsteps, the sequel inexplicably discards this intriguing development. Instead, Jamie is rendered mute and develops a psychic connection with Michael, a plot point that feels contrived and ultimately goes nowhere. The film also suffers from a weak script, filled with uninspired dialogue and underdeveloped characters. The new final girl, Tina, is absolutely insufferable. The clown noise cops make no sense at all. All clear. Nothing above, nothing below. There is complete disregard for continuity and established lore. The iconic Myers house is replaced with a generic, just run-of-the-mill house. And the plot introduces a mysterious man in black character whose motives are never fully explained in this movie. This haphazard approach to storytelling left me confused and dissatisfied. And the only reason this isn't higher on the list is honestly because I love the franchise as a whole. Next up at number 9 is Brahms, The Boy 2. This film squanders the potential of its predecessor, only offering a sense of frustration and missed opportunities. One of the major issues is the complete retconning of the first film's clever twist. In The Boy, the audience is led to believe that Brahms the doll is possessed, only to reveal in the final act that it was a ruse orchestrated by a grown man living within the walls. This subversion of expectations made the original film stand out. However, the sequel completely undoes this twist by making Brahms a genuinely supernatural entity, thus eliminating the uniqueness and cleverness of the original concept. Furthermore, Brahms the Boy 2 suffers from a predictable and formulaic plot. It relies heavily on tired horror tropes, such as jump scares and creepy children, without offering anything new or innovative to the genre. The film lacks the suspense and atmosphere that made the first film, while not particularly scary to me, still engaging. The characters are underdeveloped and uninspiring, making it difficult to connect with them or feel invested in their fate. It serves as a reminder that not all sequels are necessary, and sometimes it's better to leave a good thing alone. Coming in at number 8 is Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Book of Shadows is a notorious example of a sequel that completely misses the mark and fails to capture the essence of its predecessor. One of the most glaring issues is the drastic tonal shift. The Blair Witch Project was a groundbreaking found footage horror film that relied on psychological terror and a sense of unsettling realism. Book of Shadows, on the other hand, abandons the found footage style and embraces a more conventional, over-the-top approach. The film is filled with flashy visuals, heavy metal music, and supernatural elements that feel jarring and out of place in this universe. Moreover, the characters in Book of Shadows are unlikable and one-dimensional. The plot is convoluted and nonsensical, jumping from one disjointed scene to another without any clear direction. The film's attempts at meta-commentary on the first film's success and the media frenzy that followed feel forced and ultimately just fall flat. Overall, this film is just a misguided failure. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. 
At number seven, we have Vacancy 2, The First Cut. So this technically is a prequel, but I had to mention it. This film attempts to explain how the antagonists of the first film came to be. While the first Vacancy presented a contained and suspenseful thriller with a simple yet effective plot, this movie fails to recapture that magic. Instead, it retreads familiar territory by focusing on another unsuspecting couple who fall prey to the sadistic motel owners. The plot feels predictable and formulaic, offering little in the way of surprises or twists. Moreover, Vacancy 2 lacks the tension and claustrophobia that made the first film so effective. The scares are less impactful, and the overall atmosphere feels diluted. The characters are bland and forgettable, making it difficult to care about their fate. Additionally, the film's decision to delve into the backstory of the killers feels unnecessary and detracts from the mystery and intrigue of the original. It's a case of answering questions that nobody was asking. It's just boring and pointless. Our number six entrant is The Gallows Act Two. It's a disappointing sequel that fails to live up to even the most modest of expectations. One of the most glaring missteps is the abandonment of the found footage format that made the first film, well, not critically acclaimed by any stretch of the word, it, it made it at least somewhat unique. The sequel opts for a more traditional filming style, losing the raw, immersive quality that helped build tension in the original. This change makes the film feel generic and uninspired, blending in with countless other teen horror flicks of the time. Furthermore, the plot of The Gallows Act II is convoluted and nonsensical, relying on tired tropes and predictable jump scares. The characters are underdeveloped and unlikable, which is seeming to be a running theme here in this video. The film also suffers from poor pacing, with long stretches of exposition and tedious dialogue that drag down the overall experience. I hate the reveal at the end. The whole plot centers around an internet challenge, and the end of this movie just solidifies every issue I have with the movie as a whole. Coming in at number five is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. This is the lowest point in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, a disappointing, at the time, conclusion to a once promising series. One of its main flaws is the jarring tonal shift. The film completely abandons the mix of dark humor and suspense of earlier installments in favor of a more campy and over-the-top approach. Freddy's jokes are more groan-inducing than funny and the death scenes are just cartoonish and lacking in genuine scares. You just feel disoriented and unengaged the whole time. Another major criticism is the convoluted and nonsensical plot. The story introduces new characters and concepts without providing satisfying explanations or believable connections to the established lore. The film also suffers from poor pacing with long stretches of exposition and unnecessary subplots that detract from the main storyline. Furthermore, Freddy's Dead lacks the emotional depth and character development that made earlier films in the franchise resonate with audiences. This lack of emotional depth leaves the film feeling hollow and superficial. Our number four entrance is Leprechaun Origins. It fundamentally misunderstands what made the original Leprechaun films, while cheesy, still somewhat enjoyable. The most glaring issue is the complete absence of Warwick Davis, the actor who defined the Leprechaun character with his quirky charm and witty one-liners. Replacing him with a generic, monstrous creature devoid of personality strips away the franchise's one unique thing about it, and leaves viewers with a bland and forgettable antagonist. Furthermore, Leprechaun Origins abandons the campy humor and over-the-top violence that were hallmarks of the series. Instead, it opts for a grim and gritty tone that feels completely out of place. The film lacks the self-awareness and fun factor that made the previous installments, however flawed, still entertaining. The plot is dull and predictable, the characters are bland and unlikable, and the scares are non-existent. Overall, Leprechaun Origins is a misguided attempt to reboot the franchise that fails on every level. By removing the elements that made the original films enjoyable, the film alienates fans of the series and fails to attract new viewers. This is one of those movies that's just pointless. Next up at number three is Jaws, The Revenge. This movie is universally regarded as one of the worst sequels ever made, a stain on the legacy of the iconic original. The film's most glaring flaw is its absurd premise, a vengeful great white shark that somehow tracks down and targets the Brody family across thousands of miles of ocean. This outlandish concept not only defies logic and biology, but also completely undermines the suspense and terror that made the first film so effective. 
Moreover, Jaws the Revenge suffers from a laughably bad script filled with cringeworthy dialogue, nonsensical plot points, and wooden acting. The characters are poorly developed and unlikable, making it impossible to care about what happens to them. The shark itself looks cartoonish and unconvincing, further diminishing the sense of threat or fear. The film also features glaring continuity errors and inconsistencies with the previous installments, making it clear that the filmmakers had little respect for the franchise's established lore. Overall, Jaws the Revenge is a laughably incompetent sequel that fails in every way. It is a poorly written, poorly acted, and poorly executed film that insults the intelligence of the audience. Coming in at number two is I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer. The third installment in the franchise is wildly regarded as a disappointing and unnecessary addition. One of the most glaring flaws is the complete departure from the original cast and characters. The absence of familiar faces like Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prinze Jr. leaves a void that the new bland characters just, they fail to fill it. The film suffers from a predictable and uninspired plot. It retreads familiar slasher tropes with a group of teenagers being stalked and killed by a mysterious figure. The scares are cheap and predictable, relying on jump scares and horrible looking gore rather than genuine suspense and psychological terror. In this movie, the fisherman killer is he's just a spirit. His whole motive in the first two films was revenge, and now he's just a ghost killing random people who had nothing to do with him whatsoever. I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer is a forgettable and very unnecessary sequel that fails to capture the spirit of the original film or even its predecessor. It's genuinely one of the worst movies I've seen in my life, but not quite the worst. Our final entrant in this ranking rumble is Jeepers Creepers Reborn. It fails on every level, tarnishing the legacy of a once promising horror franchise. Look, Jeepers Creepers 3 is really bad, but this is way worse. One of its major flaws is the complete lack of originality and suspense. The film relies heavily on tired horror tropes and jump scares, offering nothing new or innovative to the genre. The plot is predictable and uninspired, following a group of stereotypical characters who become victims of the Creeper. The scares are cheap and predictable, lacking the tension and atmosphere that made the first two films, while flawed, still somewhat effective. Jeepers Creepers Reborn suffers from poor production values and horrendous acting. Can't believe I let you drag me to this. This is the Coachella of cosplay. The special effects are laughably bad, with the Creeper looking like a cheap Halloween costume. The dialogue is stilted and unnatural, and the actors deliver their lines with little conviction or emotion. I have absolutely nothing good to say about this film other than, hey, you made a movie. I've never done that, and I know it's extremely difficult. This film is a missed opportunity to revive an understandably tarnished franchise and instead serves as a reminder of how not to make a sequel. It's terrible. But there you have it. Those are the 10 worst horror sequels in my opinion. Let me know down in the comments what you think the worst horror movie sequel is. If you enjoyed this look at some awful movies, like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. We have some new designs up on Pro Wrestling Tees, so check those out. Also, check out the other links down in the description. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there's no count out for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.